G'day guys, how you doing? And uh, if you've been following my channel for uh, for a while, you'll notice that every now and then I come up with these uh, 3D printed part designs. Um, I started off with the cable holder diffraction spike masks, and it's just evolved uh, from there. They uh, they lock into the uh, into the actual rasser itself um, quite securely. The very first versions probably didn't, um, but the latest versions, like version uh, three and four. Um, do as well and they also accommodate the dew heater ring. Uh, I've also come up with a couple of um, uh, what was it, a couple of dew shield um, designs as well uh, with the um, with drop-in masks that uh, drop in into the actual dew shield and lock in um, to route cables out and also block you know, any lights that the cameras may have on especially ZWOs, um, not so much QW, uh, QHYs. Uh, and, and now, because I've evolved to uh, the flat panel and ultra motors, because I want to incorporate um, automated flats into my imaging sessions, instead of having to pull down all the rasses, bring them inside, and then um, shoot flat flats, which is something I've been a bit lazy with uh, lately. Um, and at the moment, with Prima Loose Lab, they don't have... Uh, um, a driver for uh, triplet um, automated uh, access through Nina um, or doublets uh, even. So uh, right now I'm left with uh, only being able to control one and that's sort of okay at this stage because I am currently printing uh, the other two dew shields for um, um, other two rasses. Now the dew shields take between 20, 25 to 30 hours to print, um, depending on if I end up slowing it down throughout the night so it's not so loud. Uh, I've also had to upgrade my 3D printer um, in order to print this uh, new um, dew shield that I'll show you in a minute. And the reason for that is because of the uh, the dovetail um, plate design that I've designed into the dew shield. Uh, so it's a lot wider on one end. And my um, Creality Ender um, 6 uh, didn't have a build plate quite big enough for it. Um, which is okay because the Ender 6 uh, taught me a lot to do with 3D printing. I still feel like there's still a lot I need to learn about 3D printing. Um, but it taught me a lot. And now I've got the uh, FlashForge Guider 2 uh, 3D printer and I've noticed a, a big jump in quality of my prints. Um, and just using their software as well to slice um, the prints uh, has been a it's been a lot more user-friendly and maybe it's just because I understand it a little bit more now. Um, but I'm also able to do this, uh, I don't know if I was able to do it with Crowley, probably um, using the uh, Ultimaker, I think it's Ultimaker slicer software. Um, uh, but with the FlashForge I can uh, set up a honeycomb um, infill which reduces the weight of an item uh, but also increases the strength. Uh, I know one of the comments in uh, a previous video of mine, um, they did mention that. Uh, so I'm really happy with the, the 3D printer, um, how it all works. Not too happy with the touchscreen, but anyway, <laughs> I seem to be going off of the actual what we should be talking about. Right, so um, here's my new designed dew shield. Um, one of the things for it is uh, this uh, drop-in um, uh, diffraction spike cable holder mask here uh, as you can see it's only got three prongs but that still creates a uh, four spike um, star uh, the other night I was able to shoot a couple of um, test images with it uh, just to see what my stars sort of look like um, and I'm pretty happy with them uh, I wasn't able to do too much because it was cloudy so I was shooting between some clouds um, here and there uh, but uh, yeah, they, they turned out um, fairly nice, so I was, uh, I was happy with it. Um, and the reason I removed the fourth one, which is what's in a lot of my other versions of um, cable holder masks, 
it's that way it's easier to get to the filter. Um, I mount my filters on the bottom and I have no problems with the filter sliders coming out or anything like that. Being a beta um, SCCT, uh, they do have magnets in it. So we, when you put them in, they just end up popping up and um, staying in place. So it's, uh, it's a lot easier for me to get my little filter tweezers out. Go in there and take it out. And as you can see, they got um, magnets on them as well. Uh, and I don't really have to use the, the tweezers if I don't want to. I can put my hand in there and there we go. Whoop, there we go. And put it in. Um, so previously I was not able to do that at all. The other thing that I've done with this um, Dew Shield mask compared, uh, sorry, Dew Shield compared to the uh, older one, is it's a lot thinner as well. So it gives me more room on the inside to be able to pull those filters out. Um, the other ones were, were quite thick uh, and you weren't able to um, uh, do that. Uh, so that's the, the couple of changes I've, I've made here. Um, the only thing that I may need to update in the future is the actual, uh, the way these clip in um, here. They can be a little bit uh, brittle on the outside, I've sort of noticed, um, and snap off. So maybe that might be to do with my printer settings. Uh, um, I've got them quite lightweight at the moment, so there's not really any infill in them. So if I made them more solid, um, I'm sure it'd probably be a, a lot better um, there. Now the key feature also to this uh, new G-Shield um, design is that without um, the Alto and the um, a flat panel, <laughs> um, it only weighs about 420 grams or 400, between 420 and 450 grams. Um, so it's actually about 300 grams uh, lighter than my previous versions. Uh, the, I've also um, created tighter tolerances too uh, with it sitting into the, um, into the, so into the uh, rasa. It is quite tight to get in, uh, but once it's, it's in and locked into place, um, there is no movement at all um, with this uh, dew shield. It's quite secure. Uh, now the dovetail or my little dovetail plate, as you can sort of see here, um, this is a bit of a, a trial sort of piece. Uh, it's got a little hole up the top here, um, which can accommodate like a, a magnet, uh, about a 12 millimeter um, magnet. So there's also a, a hole in, in here as well on the bottom. Um, that you can put another magnet into. So if you want just an extra um, uh, secure connection, you can slide it in and um, that will keep it in place. I do have a couple of magnets around, uh, but I actually found I haven't had to use them. Um, the uh, the fit is, is quite snug and, uh, and yeah, it's been pretty good so far. Um, so this is the, the plate here. And if I just move, this up, I never really like um, forcing motors or moving motors when they're not connected, but anyway. Um, and I'll disconnect the, the cables on the side here. There we go. As I said, it's, it's quite snug. So basically you can slide the whole unit off. As you can see here, it's attached uh, to my auto motor, this plate. Um, and it just slides into the into the bottom um, here, which you can see uh, on camera. Maybe not too well. This unit does weigh. <laughs> this whole setup, main raster setup, does weigh a bit. But there you go. Hopefully you can sort of see that there on the bottom of the uh, uh, the dew shield right there. And then when I want to connect it up or put it on, I can just. <laughs> slide it in like so. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool for uh, adapt, uh, adaptability. Um, I'm sure 
there's other um, uh, flat panel systems that you could probably end up using with it to be honest um, but I've just basically I uh, created the gaps and um, tolerances for this one to suit uh, my um, my flat panels for the uh, the Alto and uh, and flat panel um, design so as you can see it, it pretty much ends up closing the whole system right up um, and the actual cable holder here itself is uh, embedded back um, past the actual outer rim of the of the rasa so the cables can go straight in and out without any problems of this here um, uh, hitting it at all so uh, yeah I'm pretty pretty proud of my design um, and uh, and yeah like always um, if you are interested in uh, one of these um, and you don't have a 3d printer yourself uh, feel free to reach out to me via my website um, and uh, I also uh, you know sell the files as well on my website too um, so if you're interested in, in 3d printing one of these yourself um, you can because uh, international uh, prestige costs and all that can be quite expensive but from what others people have uh, have told me um, is that they've ended up getting me to print the file uh, print them for them because uh, some places that uh, do 3d printing are actually quite expensive um, especially probably something like this being so large um, and you need a big printer to do it they I don't know like the cost could be quite uh, quite expensive but um, I try to you know help out as many people as I can because um, I know the hobby is expensive and stuff like that and uh, and yeah so uh, this is my new 3d printed part for my Rasa triplet system um, Overall, the total weight of this with the um, flat panel and ultra motor is just shy of two kilos. Uh, so that um, for me kind of sucks uh, because that's another six kilos on top of my already uh, over um, uh, my uh, CGXL capacity. So uh, yeah, we'll see how we how we get on there but um might have to get myself maybe a new mount in the future anyway well uh, more on that stuff uh, probably later on anyway so uh, yeah i hope you've uh, enjoyed this video uh if you have please give me a big thumbs up if you've got any comments leave them below um if you have any uh any questions or or um could see maybe what else we could end up using this with i mean um if your filter system is up the top instead, the the uh, the juice shield itself can be mounted the other way around, um, which then means that uh, the um, your field uh, flattener and motor will come to the top instead. And the only reason I actually sort of maybe haven't quite done it like that is because I've got my um, uh, eye for the uh, Primalus uh, Eagle Four com uh, computer. Uh, the uh, SQM um, I, uh, which incorporates into some of my data um, uh, to, to give me an idea on each image on what the reading was for that, and then I can sort of determine whether you know maybe some clouds have come along or something like that when the the um, the, uh, the reading dips um, a little bit lower. But uh, but you know maybe you could attach a um, a guide scope. A small guide scope um, to the bottom of it instead of uh, one of these motors um, and flat panels so I guess uh, there's the possibility of it being uh, used for other um, accessories um, yeah anyway that's it for me guys so uh, yeah if you haven't uh, checked out some of my other videos please check them out uh, got any questions feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below or jump on my website and uh, and contact me that way um, the uh, the print file is uh, up on my website um, so if you want to download it uh, purchase it download it um, and uh, and print it out yourself uh, just be aware that the build platform needs to be around about 260 millimeters on one side because um, uh, with the flash forge guider uh, 2 i'm pretty sure it's 2 
50 by 260 or 270 um, and what I do is I rotate the, the print around um, so the long end is printing here yeah, and it fits on the plate just uh, there so um, yeah just make sure that your uh, if you do have a 3d printer um, and you are looking to print your own one of these uh, just make sure that the build plate is uh, large enough um, yeah all right guys that's it for me so until next time take it easy see you